want to ask who's responsible for the deterioration of our democracy, which means the deterioration of our rights to shape our future and that of posterity. The perpetrators are clear. Big corporations, big media, and big government in their thraldom. That's the triad. And money greases the wheel. But who are the enablers? The enablers are us. Because first of all, we don't show up. Half of democracy is showing up. Showing up for town meetings, for rallies, for courtrooms. Showing up for marches. Showing up to vote. We have a low estimate of our own significance as citizens. You can talk to high school students and ask them, who are you? And they'll say their name, they'll say they're children of their parents, they'll say they're swimmers, they'll say they're book lovers, they'll say all kinds of things before, 20 minutes later, someone raises their hand and said, we're citizens. That's their role. But they don't get taught that in school. They don't learn civic skills. They learn computer literacy. They don't learn literacy. They don't connect the schools with the community to raise people who know how to shape the future of their neighborhood, state, country, and the world. So this is why I wrote, I finally wrote a short book. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Breaking Through Power. It's easier than we think. And I'm very willing to be challenged on documenting it's easier than we think. One percent or less. We hear about the other one percent, you know, the Occupy Wall Street called the top one percent. One percent or less is what it takes if it asks the following question. What are all these things we want to change in this country? Well, some of them we can change ourselves. We can change our diet, our exercise. Some of it we can change by organizing food co-ops and things like that. But the major changes to deal with the <coughs> empire, to deal with the military industrial complex, to deal with the strategic planning by big corporations of every aspect of our life. They're planning our genetic inheritance. They're planning our education. They're strategically planning our food. They're planning our health care. They're planning our tax system. They're planning our uh, public budgets and their allocations. All of this comes down to Congress. Congress is the most powerful branch of government, although it doesn't use it. It gives it up to the executive branch and to the lobbyists. Congress is made up of just 535 people. They put their hand, shoes on like you and I every day. And back home, they've got the insurance agents organized, they've got the auto dealers organized, they've got the real estate industry or organized, etc. But we the people are not organized because although we can air our grievances and talk about our diagnostics, about injustice, and, and put forth good solutions, Somehow, we never reach the Congress. If you don't reach the Congress, if you don't organize Congress watchdog groups in every congressional district, you are leaving the most powerful asset you have, the U.S. Congress, with all the power you've given it in the hands of the big corporations.